Students, uh, wish you a good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, good afternoon, sir. We can hear you. Okay, okay, Sandarwan. Thank you, Buddha. Okay, uh, very glad to see you all. But uh, could see only five people. Shall we wait for another one or two minutes? People seems not usually working on time, is it? Okay, we have 10 students. Ten students are there. Right. Seems we have waited for another two to three minutes. Right. Let me share my screen now. Okay. Hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. So this is uh, your submissions. Right, we have 48 people who have submitted the answers. So let's uh, now actually what was the assignment last time? The assignment was to see how you start with a broad scope and then narrow down into few research questions. Right, so I think you can remember what we did. If I take you to the slideshow. Like we did last time. So in planning a research, this is what you did. So we started with a broad research area, and then I asked you to come up with a selected few questions. So let's uh, review certain, I'll be marking all, but again, let's review for the time being. So we have Jaya Kirti. Jaya Kirti, sorry. M.A. Jaya Kirti. So if I look at the student submission, you can see that already. Now this person has started with management accounting for a manufacturing company, so a broad area. Then overhead allocation and arrow area. Then certain questions. What method currently allocated? What factors influence? How to check? Right, the accuracy of the overhead allocation. 
what are the challenges. Then out of that, that person has selected few. So this is what you have to do. You have to start with a broad area and then you have to narrow down. Right. So quite a nice attempt. Then we go to RHE. See RHE submission. RHE submission is external auditing. Then has selected audit planning and risk assessment. So what is audit planning and risk assessment? What includes audit planning and risk assessment? Yeah, these are uh, these topics not bad, but again, now you need to have a research problem. That means now uh, maybe something that is of concern in this area. Of course, audit planning and risk assessment is an important area when it comes to auditing, right? How to carry out the audit planning. Likewise, it's there. Then I uh, selected a few topics, few questions out of that. Let's see, Sandarwani is there. Financial accounting. So, financial accounting is a very broad area. So, she has taken the IFRS adoption. She has taken the IFRS adoption. So, how has IFRS adoption affected the quality and the usefulness? Ah, that's a substantial area. What are the challenges and opportunities when implementing IFRS? How the IFRS adoption? Uh, I think some very important, nice, broad topics. Not mm, very narrow that uh, you could get answers, but I think this is a very good example. Right? Select, then you select out of these few areas, few research questions. So then let's see. Surya Rachi is there. Surya Rachi. Yeah, corporate reporting, sustainable reporting. How does the integration of sustainable reporting practice influence the overall quality of corporate reporting? What are the criteria used by companies in selecting sustainable reporting standards? Is there a correlation between implementation of sustainable reporting? Yes. Again, a very, very nice redone uh, response. And then out of that, uh, this person has selected Surya which has selected few areas. That's also good. We have several other submissions. Of course, we have 48 submissions. I'm not going to uh, see them all. So we can see these are the students who are subject. Let's see this silver submission. Tax account. The impact of tax policy changes in corporate decision making. Mm, very interesting one. Another very good topic. And then how do tax policy uh, changes affect the company planning strategies? Then what is the influence of tax policy changes on the effective tax rates? Right. Likewise, several questions are taken and then so you can see you start with a broad area. Now, even for your research proposal, your assignment, your major assignment, this is what you have to do. And today I'm going to lay out the foundation how to do a literature review. I'm going to teach you how to do a literature review. And then you can apply that and perform a proper literature review. We'll see how to do that. OK, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you for the submissions. Really appreciated what you have done.
So I'll be checking these things and marking this later. We have 48 attempts and if someone could not do that, can't help Puta because it was open and this closes itself because these are quiz. Uh, this given in a quiz format, but these not only the assessment that you'll be getting. So don't worry. Right. Okay. So I see that they are very promising. So today let's go into number four. Number four is about literature review. It's a number four. So please download and open. This is chapter number four. Right, reviewing the literature. Right. OK. So we are going to look at a very important topic because I think you can remember when you wanted to do a study or when you are planning to do a research study, the first thing which we were telling you to do is what? Look at the existing literature. Look at the existing studies. Right? Now, can you remember the Kothari's process of scientific research? How many stages were there in Kothari's process? Hmm? How many stages were there? On the first day itself, I taught you. Let's ask some students. How many stages were there? Niranjana. Hello, sir. Niranjana, sorry for that. Very sorry. Niranjana, yes. Hello, Buddha. Now, how many st steps were there, stages were there? in the research process, scientific research process. On the first day itself, I Seven, sir. Very good, no, excellent, excellent, excellent. I'm very, very happy. Congratulations, Buddha. you are a very attentive student. That's very nice. Thank you. Sir. OK, so there were seven stages. Now, Pushpika, number 23, uh, can you tell us what was the first stage? Uh, identify the research question. Excellent. Identify the research question. First of all, you have to identify the research question. Yeah. Then, Jayakiti, can you tell us, Puta, now what was the second step? What was the second step? Uh, read existing literature. Very good. Look at the literature. Look at the literature. Right. So now I'm going to ask you take about two to five minutes to see what is literature. Go to the internet and tell me simply. I don't want you to read out what's there. I want you to tell simply what is literature. Take two to three minutes and tell me. What is literature? What is literature? What is literature? After all, then I'll ask you. But you have to tell in your own words, not to just to uh, read a website. Anyone can do that. So just tell me what's literature? What is literature? Take two to three minutes and tell me what is literature. What do you mean by literature? Take few minutes and tell me.
Tell me, take two to three minutes. Okay, so we'll ask your students, what's the literature review? Okay, we have Sandarwan. Buddha, can you tell us what's the literature review? Or what's literature, in fact? Sandarwan? You are muted, you Okay, till uh, Sandarwan gets ready, we'll ask another student, another student to respond. Vijay, Vijay Sundar, number 24. What's literature, Pratap? Uh, yes, sir. it's, I think, uh, previous uh, academic written documents related very to good, good. Speak, very uh, good topic. Very good. Okay. Okay. He told that in his own, own words. That's the most important point. Okay. Okay. Let's ask Fonseca, number 45. Fonseca. Fonseca, what do you mean by literature? Fonseca has no answers. Why is that? Fonseca seems not answering. Then Zaib. Zaib, what is literature? Writings, publications uh, on a specific topic, including an evaluation of a subject material. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good, very nice. Then we have uh, Dinushi. Dinushi, what e? What do you mean by literature? And um, literature re review or literature, sir? Literature. I want to know what's literature. Pass the review. Get it. Is still a little more detach again over the year. It is a means what? Something academic right now, uh, past document, something like okay. this. Mm -hmm. Right. A phrase, Ali. What is literature to you? Hello, sir. Yes, Buddha. What so is it's literature? It's a form of expressing uh, someone's opinion or maybe a form of, uh, yeah, it's basically an expression. So maybe a novel, uh, sorry, it's, it may be a fiction or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Mudita, what is literature, Buddha? Mudita, Mudita, I don't know, 62. Hello. A Mudita, Mudita, yes. Yes, Buddha. Mudita, uh, tell us, what's literature? So, uh, literature is a body of written works. Okay, body of written works, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Right. I think you all gave the correct answer to a certain extent. To a certain extent, you gave the correct answer. Yes, a literature review. Right. We shall. That's what we are going to discuss today. The literature is already available, already published information in a given topic. For a given topic, already published information. Already available information to the public could be considered as literature. Now, for an example, if I am looking at the impact of IFRS adoption in Sri Lanka, right? What are the challenges the companies had faced? Then, whatever study done in that area, whatever document that's available in that area already published and available to the public could be considered as a literature. It could be in the form of books. It could be in the form of uh, authentic website information. Likewise, there are different ways that we can get this information. It can be in published studies. It can be already research articles, books. Then uh, even in websites, there might be information from authentic websites like IASB or maybe from some other websites like KPMG website, EY, Deloitte, PwC websites, there might be studies done by them and they might have indicated that. So yes. Now the next question comes, so that's the already available information on the topic. Right, good. Now why do we need to look at already published information? Pavan, why do you think that we need already published information? Why do we need to look at that already published information? Uh, so from that we can get an understanding on the depth that a uh, person has gone to and so that uh, we know what has been already discovered and mm. what are the new ways available for us to uh, find. Excellent. Very good. Spot on. Pavani gave the very correct answer. Why do we need to look at what others have done is then you can see what they have done, first of all. And if they have already the answer for your question in their research, then Puta, you don't need to do research after all. Because the information is already there. The information is already there. So you don't need to do that research. Or maybe they have done the research, but not as no, they have not addressed a certain area. Now, for example, they might have done IFRS, different IFRS adoption, but not a particular IFRS. Other IFRS adoptions are there, but, but you could not find uh, adoption of IFRS 9, for an example. So likewise, you will understand what has been done and what has not been done, and then you can identify the gap. And if you are trying to find answers for a question, if the research is already done, then it's a matter of getting those information and implementing them. Right, you can use them. So very correct. So see what has been done. Right, you can identify do by doing a literature review. Right. Now let's try to watch a video on how to perform a literature review. Now review means you are going to look at the particular information that the others have already done on the topic that you have selected. Right. So when it comes to literature, so that's what we are going to discuss today. So here is reviewing the literature, meaning you are going to go through the literature. So this literature could be a list of theories, written work, findings of others, a group of works, published information. Yes, it has to be published information. Published in the sense, it has to be made available to the public. Secret information cannot be literature. It has to be made available to the public. Very good. So why do you need to look at the literature review? 
yes to look at what has been done and then to understand what has not been done and you also very correctly told literature could be research articles books reports even videos journal articles theories even poetry can be literature but we are not interested in that kind of literature but that's also part of literature right theses dissertations reports by you know so likewise old but remember you need to you need to ensure that the literature is of good quality some literature might not be of good quality so you have to make sure the literature is of good quality and then what you could do is you could use that for your research right so the theme of this chapter chapter number 4 that i am teaching you is this right performing a literature review so why do you need to do that then only you will know about what has been done and not done in your topic now let us let let's say student wants to see uh, what are the uh, implications of doing or implementing a particular accounting standard now these days i have started a research with cs sri lanka and we are going to do that research for the safa region right south asian federation of accountant region in that region we are going to do a research for s1 and s2 standards right for s1 and s2 standards we are going to do a research right why because s1 and s2 standards released by issb right international sustainability standards board s1 and s2 there are two standards issued the one is general sustainability aspects the other one is climate changes you would like to see like what kind of challenges our companies in implementing these standards will face and what kind of challenges what kind of issues right what's the level of difficulty in disclosing the information required under these standards so we are going to look at that. why then only we can tell iwsb as well as iisb that whether these standards could be implemented as it is in the south asian region some standards we might not be able to implement as at as it is right so we need to be mindful of that so likewise then i'm going to look at the literature now if i'm going to uh, see the implementation of s1 and s2 standards can you tell me what comes what what becomes the first literature what's the first literature that i'll be consulting hmm what's the literature that i'll be consulting s1 and s2 standards the published information by issb international sustainable standard board so likewise in doing a research as you know there is a seven step process in that seven step process once you define your research problem then the second step is to look at the literature right so now we shall go through a nice video by mr faud right dr faud and see how to perform a literature review reviewing the literature means you read the literature you review the literature and you see what's been done and what's not been done what are the gaps and then you will try to understand and address those gaps in your research on the other hand if the research is already done you will adopt that and you will take the information and implement that to address your problem right so that's why you need to do a literature review did you understand that pruta so it's a must right and also you can see there is a reason that why you should do a literature review can someone tell me why you should do a literature review there is a specific reason as well you have to do a literature review yes yes students you have to do why we'll ask a student why you need to do a literature review in this in this lecture series in this uh, for this subject you have to do 
quality is zero. That's all right. Why do you think that we need to do a literature for uh, this subject? To get knowledge. Yes, to get a knowledge. That's very good on your research topic. Also, there's another reason, a very important reason. Then, that, uh, yes, that's the number one reason. But there's a second reason as well. Siri, what do you think for the other reason? Uh, to obtain uh, information on specific okay, subject yes, area. that's also that's correct. But again, there's an assignment that you have to perform on the literature review. You have to perform a critical literature review. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, you have to do a literature. Of course, you will like it, but it takes time. Remember, it's going to take a time. And I'm going to give you how to perform a literature review. And first, let's listen to Dr. Foud. And then uh, we'll listen to another person as well, how to perform a literature review, a structured literature review, step by step. I'm going to explain to you. Right? So it takes time to do a literature review, a proper one. Right? And then I'm going to ask you to do it and uh, to do, to show how you have done it as well. Okay, but how? So now let's see how to perform a literature review properly. So I'm now going to share a video with you and play a video with you. So you will see how right you could perform a literature review, the importance and how to perform one. Let's listen very carefully. Right. Hope you can see my screen again. Yes, sir. Okay, Buddha. thank you very much. So let's go here and go to this particular video. How to write the literature review? Right, a very, very nice video. And then there will be a second video later on. I'll be playing how to, how to structure it. Now let's listen to how to write. A literature review. Can you see the? I think you can see the screen. In Not only whether you can hear. to focus on how to write the literature review. Did you hear that, Pudha? Oh, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So let me put maximum sound. Okay, great. Okay, let's go to the beginning. And this Dr. Fowl here that will be explaining. How to perform a literature review. So very carefully listen to this. Right. And then we'll be discussing. I'll be stopping sometimes the video and I'll be explaining that and I'll be asking questions as well. Hmm? So how to write the literature review? In this session, we are going to focus on how to write the literature review. Not just identification of key ingredients of literature review. We are going to look into examples from published research in high impact factor journals as well. Now, becoming a scholar requires a transition from a consumer or user of the literature to a producer of or contributor to the field of knowledge. Now, when you are writing a literature, obviously that must be for a research project. So what you are doing is now you are trying to be a contributor to existing research. So literature review. The purpose of the literature review is to help the researcher to build on the work of others and make informed decisions during various stages of the research project. OK, now you can see. Here very clearly. The do good doctor explains that by doing a literature review, by reading what others have done, reviewing what others have done, the researcher, that's you, could build on the work of others. You could see what they have done and you can develop based on that. Right? A review of literature identifies and highlights relevant themes and documents, significant findings, frameworks and or instruments from earlier research that will serve as the foundation of the current project. Not just the literature review help you identify what relationships have been studied 
or whether or not those relationships were significant or not. It can help you identify the instruments that have been used, the methodology that was used to conduct earlier research. Now, say for an example, Puta, you want to see how a particular IFRS impacts the company performance, implementation of a particular IFRS. Let's say leases, lease standard, how does it impact the performance of a company? Right, let's say you want to see. Now, let's say now what kind of literature you could read. Now, for this particular example, what kind of literature you could read? You could see a study that done is already done in some other country. Maybe you could see that there is a study done in Pakistan or maybe in India, maybe in Bangladesh. So there you can see what are their findings. You can see significant findings. What's the framework they have used? What's the framework? Is it quantitative, qualitative? And you can see the instruments. Instruments here means how they collected data and then how they analyzed the data, the methods that they applied. All you can understand by reading the literature, by reviewing the literature. So that's why I'm saying literature review makes your life very easy. Right? Okay, let's go. Now, it's very important that one documents the literature review. Now, documenting the literature review is important to convince the reader that the researcher is knowledgeable about the problem area. And when you are writing about a literature or when you're writing your literature review, if you document it, you can be more critical. And this shows that you have done your preliminary homework and this is necessary to conduct the research. Now, how do you document your literature? review? Now, it can help obviously keep track of what you have done so that you don't repeat unproductive searches. Something that you have done, you know that you have done it. So you do not spend time Document me, documenting means that once you read a piece of literature, you have to write it down. So what I use is usually Microsoft Excel. In Microsoft Excel, I will write the topic of the particular literature, write the, the, the journal, then the topic of that particular literature. Likewise, I'll be using them. Right? I'll be documenting them. Then I can keep a track of what I read and what I did not read. Then even I will summarize that content. Okay, so you can avoid any unproductive searches in future, maybe because you might have read it. Then I'm going to number the PDF files that I read, right? And I'm going to put that number in the Excel file and put a hyperlink as well. So immediately I could read it. And of course there's referencing software right like Mendeleev but again this is what I do so you could keep track by documenting so documenting the literature review is very important of course finally you have to do a review and you have to include that in your proposal now the major assignment in this particular subject is the research proposal and one of the sub assignment that you have to do on an individual basis is the literature you're redoing everything that you have previously done so you know what you have done if you document it if you keep track of it reuse successful search search strategies for future papers so you know you know that okay this strategy was successful and i got this particular information because i used this particular search string maybe in web of science or scopus so you use the same research string for a different research project or a different get, uh, variable or set of variables. Now, a research paper or any literature that one reads have several points that can be documented. Now, a number of different things can be documented. However, you must be very cautious in doing so because it must be in line with what research you are conducting. If you are focusing on establishing relationship between variables, then obviously your research or your search should focus on those particular variables that you are interested in. 
Now, following details are recommended to be documented as they can help in different sections of a research paper. The first one being the title of research. The second, the objectives of, of a, the, that particular study. Now, based on those objectives, the research questions and hypothesis drawn. Four, what theory they have focused on or what theory they have used to build their theoretical framework. What variables were there in their study? The independent variables, the dependent variables, the mediators, the moderators, if any. What gaps did they fill? Now, this is particularly important. So you know that you are not repeating something that is already done. What was their sample size and technique? Who were their respondents? What were their results? So you can identify whether or not there have been any conduct contradictory results in existing research. This will also help you writing your discussion section as well. What were the limitations and future research directions of existing research? Keeping in line or keeping an eye on these will help you build your own research uh, framework or your research idea. And you would know what are your contributions to existing research. And OK, when you do a literature review, Puta, particularly when you read the research done by others, right in the Excel file, I will write down these. Now, suppose now for an example, Let's say I'm going to use Google search here, which I don't recommend, and I'll tell how to select good research from bad research, right? I'll go to maybe Google Scholar, right, or whatever. Right, this is my Google Scholar page. Or let's say, okay, let's say corporate governance. 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 And firm perform in Shida. Let's say I'm interested in this topic. And you can see already there is a study done by here in Science Direct. Now, here the problem is right, sometimes you have to pay to download, and I'll give you some helpful suggestions how to avoid that. Right, then. So this one seems that you can download and you can see that here. This paper is published in a journal or oh, its procedure. So I would not go for this particular because it's procedure. So remember certain journals are there that are of not good quality. Procedure means basically proceedings. So therefore. I would not use this. Right, proceedings, I'm not interested. But on the other hand, we have some, you know, uh, published in, in certain universities. Likewise, there are certain things. And here, this is Journal of Finance and Banking Management. You can see. To use that, there are 10 page ones. And I'll tell how to distinguish between good quality one, good quality articles, and not so good quality ones. Because there are a lot of studies, as you can see, right? And you can see by number of citations, you might citation means how many people referred this particular article in their own research. Now, say for an example, if someone read this article and had cited that in their own research, then it will come over here. Here it's 118, so it seems a good one. So maybe we'll see whether you can download it. Yes, seems we can download it. Download this paper. Set all cookies. Right. You can see. But again, mm, it's a conference paper. I wouldn't use that. Because it's a conference paper. Right. So conference papers are not good ones. In that case, what I will try to do is right. 
I go to a website called Emerald Insight. There are several websites. Emerald Insight. Emerald Insight. So in this website, there are some good journals that are there. But the problem is that you might need to pay sometimes. <laughs> but let's see. And I'm going to type here, OK. Operate governance. In Sheila. Lanka. Sri Lanka. These are keywords. Right? These are called keywords. And let's see when I say corporate performance. So give you the keywords and then you'll be able to find out several studies. And here there's one study. Telakaratna uh recall low and release study. But sometimes the studies might access is not a problem. So if you try to download this study, it will ask money. Mm. Good study. You have to pay $27, 27 in fact, pounds. 27 pounds. But there's a, there's a not so, uh, I, I, how to call that? Not so legal way to download this if you want, but you might then, you can use, to download now, you can go to Emerald, right? You can go to Emerald and search here and you can download things, but other than some studies you have to pay. Good studies you have to pay. One thing that you can do is you can ask a friend in a government university to download it and send it to you. Oh, there's another way that you can try, which is not so legal, which is called sci-fi. Or Sci Hub. So this Sci Hub, right? If you go to Sci Hub, sometimes this article might be there. Sometimes this article might be there. What you do is now this you take this article, you go to the earlier website which asks money. You are going to copy this and you are going to put to Sci Hub. Sci Hub. You're going to paste it and let's see whether it's there. If you're fortunate, it might be there. Oh, you are fortunate. So you can download without paying that dollars. Okay, it's asking some. Oh. I don't know. Sai so best now. Asking some password. And it's in uh, some other, maybe Russian. So usually post there. Yeah. Maybe this is not the original Sai Let's see. I have also has different, but I see is the one. See some other side of Southern. Yeah, this is the proper side of that. That's there. Mm. What a password it seems. Shall we try another browser? But what it has downloaded is not a PDF file. Hmm. Mirrors. Seems because it's uh, again, as you can understand, it's not so legal work because here you are trying to circumvent. 
we'll see another one. We'll go to Emerald and we can see, the, we can download. There could be free ones as well sometimes, sure. Oh, so this is one of my articles, right? We'll try to see whether we can get that. I don't know if it's available in Saiha. In those days, they gave it without any issue, but now I don't know. Oh, it's not there. Right? So give me a moment. Okay, somehow it's not working this case, right? So actually, this is not available, but uh, the earlier one should be there, but it doesn't show it. That's the problem. So this is one of ours, and I am one of the authors. Let's see this one. Usually all the ones are there. So I have to get up with the argument of it. Okay. Okay, I read it. Something is wrong inside now. Maybe they are blocked it. Let's try again. Because if not, otherwise, if you don't have access to articles, that's going to be a problem. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's also there. Ah, oh, that's there. Great. So you can see, you don't need to pay $27. You can download it. Why don't you try that? Right? Okay. So if not, you have to pay. So go to this website. So I'm going to give you about five minutes time. So I'm going to post it. This uh, Emerald website. Use a keyword, right? That's suitable for you. Let me go here and put that in chat. So Emerald, you can choose the article. Right. So I put it to the chat. And then go to Sci-Hub. Go to Sci-Hub and see whether that article is there. I'm going to put that as well. If not, you won't be able to download them. OK, try any article that in Emerald, whether you can download it. Take a few minutes and tell me what, what are your results. I'm going to ask you, right? Take a few minutes.
Okay, so how many of you succeeded? Download correct? How many? How about you? No, sir, couldn't download anything. Could you download anything? Uh -huh. yeah. So sometimes that's the case, Puta. Because sometimes what happens is uh, more recent articles hard to get. In that case, you might need to ask the help of a, uh, your friend in a government university. Right? They might help you because uh, they can download it for you and they can send it to you. Right? Now, I can see with a certain how oh, I could access to this is your city of Sri Jayavardhana Puri. And then I can access to MRL website through the University of Sri Jayavardhana So e resources are there. Now, this is uh, almost all students, current students get this access. So you might be able to ask help. Because you need good articles from Emerald and there are other ways that you could ensure the quality. I'll tell you how to get the quality. Here off campus access is there for electronic. Then you can see these are some very good databases. Emerald, Jester, Oxford Journal, Service Course, Taylor and Francis. Let's go to Emerald. So these are journal databases which has, so of course we have to access Ask me at the next login. Ask me after information. Okay. So they're asking some questions that we don't have answers. So now it knows that this particular, again, I went to Emerald, but it knows that I'm coming from University of Sri Jayavardhan. So then now you can download anything, almost not anything. Almost. Uh, if I go to the earlier one, right, it says that uh, I could not even download my one. So let's go back and now let's try to download the first one that was there. Microfinance, Emerging Economy. So I could go copy this and paste it out here. From my Jaffur access I am there. And let's see whether, yes, it has told content is available. And here I can go to the PDF and I can download it. without any board structure and performance and you can see it's there try travel a look and ready study so you can see now this particular article is published in a journal in a journal you have several articles right now i'm also now let me take an example what's this journal you might know about Ganung journal, Ganung journal, right? The purchase journal, sales journal, not that. This is journals that are called where yeah, you publish your articles. Let's say, for an example, uh, CA Sri Lanka Journal of Applied Account. See Journal of Applied Research. You can see in 2017, there's a study published, and in 2019, a study is published. So you can download that. So likewise, this is called a journal. Right, you can download that. And I put this into, and you will see that I am the, Editor in chief of this journal. Mm -hmm. and you can see this journal is published in each year. So, this is the 2019 version. You can see it. This is the Journal of Applied Research, the Institute of Child Accountants of Sri Lanka. You can see the volume three is there. That means this is the third edition. And you can see there are 
several articles published in this journal. This is the journal. And you can see how many articles are there. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Several articles. You can see I also have published there. This is uh, Kumari, my first PhD student now, the uh, doc, uh, lecturer at, at uh, Rajarati University, then Professor Disabanda, senior Professor Disabanda, then uh, this is Dr. Isurus, and then Nipuni Senanak, likewise, there are several studies. And another study of mine with Professor Samanthi Senanathan. Likewise, you can see several studies are there. Right. Okay. So in a journal, you can see each year there will be the name of the journal will be the same, but there will be several studies. And you can see investors per section. Now this is one article there in the version three or the volume three. And if you want to go and see that article, it's there. You can see at that time I was a doctor, right now a professor. So I'm the editor chief of this journal. And uh, Mr. Nishan Fernand is the chairman of this committee, and I'm the alternative chairman. And we have several reviewers. And you can see now the different articles published are there. So in one journal, you will have, right? In one volume, in one journal, in one volume, we'll have several articles. The next day, there'll be some new articles. So here you can see this article's title is Investors' Perception or Audit Expectation Gap in the context of Sri Lankan listed firms. And that particular journal article is published in the pages 1 to 27. In 20 to 47, another article published by these authors. Likewise, in one journal, you will have several articles. So when you give the reference, you can give the journal name, the title of the article, and the page numbers, right? So that you have to understand. So now if you go to the video that I screened earlier, okay. I go to the video. You can see it told here title. Title. What's this title? Now, if you go to that here, the title of the particular research is this Investors' Perception and Audit Expectation Performance Gap in the Context of Sri Lankan Listed Companies. Right? So that's the title. Now, objectives. Now, to see the objectives, you have to go to this particular research that's published and read and see. So this is the first article that's there. And you can see the abstract is given. That's the summary of the article. And in the introduction, right, you will see the objective to say the purpose of this research is this. If the purpose is given as objectives, research objectives. Research objectives are for what they are trying to do. So that's these objectives. Then the research questions, hypothesis. Okay, that also been given. The research questions are here. Explain what are the research questions. The problem statement. And any theories that have been used. Yes. Here you will see. Under literature review, you will see whether any theories have been used. Here we have used the audit expectation gap framework. Here, this is the Porter's framework that has been used. So, this is the framework that we used. So, by looking at the literature, by looking at the articles, you can see what kind of models or literature they have used. And then, what are the variables? So, you can see there are different type of variables that have been used here. Performance gap, reasonable gap, DP standards for different performance, DS standards for different standards, unreasonable expectations. So these components of gaps are explained. 
So there I'll teach you what are these independent variables, dependent variables, mediator, moderator. So what are the gaps at risk? So at the end, they will explain, right? What are the gaps that are there? So here it says theoretical and empirical gap. It says based on literature review, what gaps are identified? Then it says sample size, Respondents, results, limitations, future directions. Yes, let me show you them. So those are under methodology. So on the methodology of the study, you will see the population. Population is given. The sample is given. 200 each participants. Likewise, it has explained. Then comes the results and discussion. So what are the so results are given? Then what are the limitations? and future research directions. So at the end of the study, we explain what are the, these are all the results, several results, an interesting study, if you are interested. Then we have the discussion and conclusions. In the discussion and conclusion, we tell what are the limitations. Okay. In the study is subject to certain limitations. And then based on that limitations, what we propose as future research directions, right? For future researchers, what they could do. So you can see, right, in a literature review, right? First of all, you have to understand what are these. For this, what I do is I use an Excel file. I use an Excel file and have the subtopics and then for each article I read, I will summarize them. I will summarize them. Then later on, when I write the literature review, I'll be using them. Right? Okay, any questions? So for each article, now I showed you only one article. In a, now, if you are interested in audit expectation gap, so this is one literature. This is one literature. So likewise, you can go on reading, reading, and reading. Right? At least I recommend reading 15 articles on your selected topic. 15 articles on your selected topic. Okay? Right. Now let's listen again to Dr. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Buddha. Sir, we cannot hear the video. Oh, cannot hear. Yeah. That means is the sound ticker the handy that thing? Ah, handy one. Handy, handy one, yes. All right, good. Handy one, that Stop share. Then Buddha, what are you going to say? It's a lemon, Danny. Oh, it's a lemon, sir. Ah, I can. Whether a computer sound, they would have on. Right, let's go back. 
I'm going to put a replay on the other one. So I'm going to replay a little bit. Thank you, Buddha. Please let me know, right? Right. Now we were here. Okay. Now this is where you have to summarize. Me or take it to Buddha summarize karan no article linking article. Now there are, I showed you one article that in uh, in the journal of C journal of applied research. So you can see take one article and summarize this. Right. And when you choose articles, choose in one area and one dimension as well. The article of corporate governance, the other article also has to be something related to corporate governance or in Sri Lankan context. So likewise, you have to choose the articles based on the particular area and sub areas that you have selected that we discussed last week. Discussed last week, Namuda. So it has to go within that theme, not something very different because reading different topics is not going to help. You have to select a particular research area, then a sub area, and start reading on the research questions that you are interested in that particular sub area. Right? Now let's play the video. So I rewinded since, thank you, Puta, thank you very much for uh, telling me that you could not hear that. So let's go through. And this has been published. So you know. Take a look Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Puta. Immediately, Puta, can please tell us. So uh, sometimes uh, the sound system, I might have not, you know, invoked the particular uh, feature. Mm -hmm. So please let me know. Right? Now let's listen. What? jargon to use, what words to use, what to avoid, what to include. Now, literature review. It actually has two sections primarily. Obviously, uh, it may change with um, the research journal that you are try trying to target, or it, it will change, obviously, with the focus of your research. If you are writing a thesis, obviously, uh, you write it differently because you have got more space to write. If you are writing a research paper, you write it differently. But primarily, the focus is on two things. First, independent or individual discussion on variables. The second, how to write when developing framework to establish relationship. We all have seen research paper. And in literature review section, we normally see that first, the variables are discussed individually. For instance, if I'm focusing on writing a paper on corporate social responsibility and organizational performance, in literature review, first I will define or write about corporate social responsibility. Then I will write about organizational performance. And finally, I will have a third section, section on corporate social responsibility and organizational performance to establish the relationship between the two variables and propose my hypothesis. Now, what do you include when you are writing about independent or when you are conducting now, yes, Dr. Faud explained that first you will be discussing. Now, for an example, if I am talking about how a particular, let's say, how corporate governance impacts performance. So here, corporate governance is called the independent variable. The independent variable. Corporate governance. Because that poses some impact on the dependent variable as performance. Right? So independent, dependent. So here what Dr. Faud explains, first you have to explain the independent variable. Then you have to tell, then you have to explain studies that link between the independent and dependent variables. Now a little bit more about independent and dependent variables because you, are, you might be new for this. Let's say for an example, uh, the number of hours that you study and the grades that you get for your subjects. What's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable? The number of hours you study and the grades that you get for your subjects. What's the independent and what's the dependent variable? Independent variable is the variable that causes the dependent variable. Here, you can see in this example, number of hours you study is the independent variable. The dependent variable is the grades that you get. Let me take another example. Advertising expenditure and sales. Advertising expenditure and sales. Can you tell me what's the independent variable and what's the dependent variable?
advertising expenditure and sales plus the independent variable advertising sir independent advertising expenditure indeed advertising expenditure that's the independent variable then what's the dependent variable in a company what's the dependent variable sales sir sales sales revenue sales revenue sales revenue very good so independent variable is what causes the dependent variable what impacts the dependent variable right now um, yeah likewise we can take different examples right let's say this uh, another example the number of hours that you exercise and your health condition number of hours you exercise and the health condition of yours so what's the independent what's the dependent variable number of hours you exercise is what independence independent independent variable indeed what's the dependent variable your health condition okay let's take another example a very very similar one these days which might be impacting you greatly okay salary of employees and satisfaction of employees but salary for employees is one variable and satisfaction of employees is a different variable now tell me salary is what independent or dependent independent or dependent independent independent because that's the variable that causes the dependent variable then life satisfaction or the employee satisfaction is what dependent the dependent variable right life satisfaction or employee satisfaction depends on the salary so likewise in your literature review you have to identify what are the independent right variables then you have to identify the relationship between independent and dependent variable that's being found by other studies and in addition to what dr faust says i also would like to include another area that you can include in the literature review that are relevant theories that are relevant theories and models now in your earlier studies i think you have studied about agency theory stakeholder theory resource dependency theory like as different theories might you have understood you can explain those theories discuss those theories review those theories also in a literature review right is that clear okay let's go ahead acting an independent individual discussion on variables now there are a number of things that one should consider obviously this this list is not exhaustive you may include or you may remove a certain things depending on whether you are writing for a thesis or a research paper so what's the concept of the variable how do you define this variable what is meant by this variable now is there any conceptualization of this variable in your area of study for example if i am conducting a research on servant leadership is there a definition of servant leadership in higher education now has the definition changed over time and if yes how had has it changed over time were any new dimensions added to it what are the key facets characteristics that emerge from the definition are there any key dimensions to the to the concept now is there any agreement on these definitions some basic characteristics some basic faces that all the different researchers or scholars have identified while defining the particular concept what does the variable do for organization how it facilitates their working now what are the implications of this variable for the organization or the industry that you are targeting or the sector that you are targeting now why studying this variable or this concept is particularly important what could be its consequences maybe if it's a predictor variable now if it's a criterion variable why studying the studying the antecedents is important in your field of study so what could be uh, the the what what is the importance of this variable in a particular area of study now status of literature on the variable in the field stock field of study is it limited so what are the limitations this obviously helps you emphasize on the need to study 
this particular concept. How will the assessment of the variable help in the field of study? Now, why studying this variable help? Why should this variable be studied? What are the common measurements of the variable? What are the common dimensions? Which one are you using? Now, if you are using or if you are studying a variable and if there are certain common dimensions, what dimensions are you focusing on? Now, you might not include this in a research paper, but this is significantly important in a research thesis, especially for a PhD thesis. What conceptualization or operational definitions are you using in your study? So what's the, what's your operational definition for a particular variable or the concept that you are using? Now, does this conceptualization reflect an instrument measurement? Now, this is very important. Sometimes what we do is we get carried away. We find a definition interesting, easy to read, easy to understand. So we say, OK, yes, this is the definition that we are going to use. But our measuring instrument is totally in contrast to the definition that we have proposed in our literature. So your operational definition is very important. It will guide your measuring instrument. Why use this conceptualization? Is it very close to your area of study? And we are going to look into the examples of each of these points. For example, the concept of variable. So what you do is how do you define or how do you write about the concept of variable? So we have got this paper measuring corporate social responsibility, a critical review of survey instruments, corporate social responsibility and environmental management journal. Now here is the example. Let me go through it. Now, now uh, what you have to understand is the same variable could be defined in different ways. Now, first we are looking at in the literature review how a variable is defined. Now, here the example taken by Dr. Foul is about CSR, corporate social responsibility. Now, he's referring one study here, and that's this study listed over here, right? A critical review, right? Measuring corporate social responsibility, a critical review, review. That's one article. So he refers to that article and he will take the definition. Likewise, in different articles, the same concept might be defined in different ways. So here in a literature review, you have to take at least three, four definitions of the concept that you are talking about, and you have to compare contrast in the review. Now, say for an example, if it is corporate governance, now there are different definitions for corporate governance. There are different definitions of corporate governance. What you are required is to compare and contrast those definitions. Now, in 1990s, the defined corporate governance, Cadbury Committee defined corporate governance, governance a system by which companies are directed and controlled. Then, likewise, there are other definitions for corporate governance as well from OECD and different other people have defined corporate governance. So, what you need to do is you have to compare and contrast these definitions and you have to tell what's your idea about that in a literature review right so let's see he's going to now show you from where this particular definition for this csr has been taken okay this is the paper and if we go now down, this is the research paper that he told by the critical review paper and now he's going to take the definition that's explained in this particular paper do its literature review section, the conceptual development of CSR. So how the concept has, has evolved. If you look into it, we start by, actually this is one of my papers. So what we do is we start by identifying that there has been a lot of debate on CSR. And it has been identified as an elusive concept that has been debated all, all these years. And then what we do is we found a paper that has identified a 37 definition of the concept of CSR. And this shows the, cons the, the complexity of the concept. And then we start, or we actually write about one of the earliest definitions of CSR. These two definitions. Followed by this, obviously, some recent definitions or how the definitions have changed over time. So this actually shows that you start by identifying the earlier definitions and how the definitions have changed over the years. What different definitions have been postulated over the years following this? So this is how you, you need to present at least two or three definitions of the concept. Now you can see there were 37 definitions. 
Now, CSR in a concept, uh, the uh, concept of CSR has been defined in 37 different ways from history to now. So in the, you have to capture, not the old 37, of course, you cannot do that. You can capture the major ones and you can tell how it evolved in your literature review. Right, now see what's your concept that you have, to, you will be discussing. And then see, at least I would not say 37, at least take four or five definitions, or three or four definitions and see how it has changed over time. What are the differences of these three or four definitions on the concept that you have selected? So likewise, students, you have to identify your key concepts and then see how it's, they have been defined, various ways, and you have to document that in a literature review. So that's why, that's what Dr. Faud is telling. Obviously, if it's a research paper, one or two is enough. But if you are writing a thesis, it's highly recommended that you propose three or four definitions and compare and contrast those definitions. This is how you can write about the conceptualization of CSR, what definitions are available in the literature. Now, coming back. Now, is there any conceptualization of the variable in your area of study? Now, for example, if I'm studying a concept, say servant leadership in higher education or social responsibility in maybe a, a particular sector, is there a definition of this particular concept in that particular area? So you need to write about this. How do you write about this? This is how you can write. Now, this definite, this, this. Uh, S. Fijani at, and others, 2013, defined university social responsibility. So what they did or what the study did, does, did was that they looked into the concept of social responsibility in universities. So obviously, when you are looking to, into social responsibility in universities, the concept is totally different from corporations. So now you need to define this particular concept with, in context of the sector. So this is how they defined USR in higher education. So it's always a good idea to find a definition that fits your area of study. How the definitions have evolved or changed over time. We have already looked into this, that we started on, uh, in this paper, we actually started by focusing at the earlier definitions and how the definitions have changed over time with Carol, with Vata and others of Bowen. So how the definitions have changed over time? How did new definitions come in? And then while you are reading those definitions, keep an eye on what were the factors or what were the dimensions in the earlier definitions. And with the change of time, have the scholars or the researchers identified new dimensions, new characteristics of the concept in the definition. Again, this will lead you to identify what are the key facets, traits, characteristics that emerge from the definition. Now, this is an example, obviously. Now, Dajroth uh, 2008 noted that most CSR definition addressed either all or some of the following. So these are the key dimensions of CSR according to this paper in 2008 based on their analysis of 37 definition. But obviously, you, you might not find a paper on th that has 40 or 50 definitions or that has reviewed 40 or 50 definitions. So what you can do is once you are studying those definitions, Obviously, once you present these three, four definitions, you can write, okay, these are common themes that emerge from these four or five definitions. So what conceptualization or operational definition that you are going to use in your study? Does conceptualization reflect an instrument or measurement? Obviously, we've discussed this point. So here you can write it like this. For example, CSR in the present study, and this is uh, taken from a paper in which they wrote that CSR in the present study is based on the instrument by Magnan and Farrell. Who noted that CSR, this is the definition that uh, an author used in their paper. And they mentioned it like this. Okay, this is the definition that we are going to use. So what is the definition that you are going to use? This is how you can write in your paper or your thesis. Now, what does... Okay, students. Now, in a review of the literature, you have to start with your concept. Right? Concept. And that means the variable that you are talking about or the variables that you are talking about, and then try to see how it's been defined in different studies. Compare and contrast these definitions in your review. Take at least three or four. And then you also can tell, okay, how it had evolved during the period. 
Uh, Carol had defined CSR a long time back, and then you can see how it's now defined by uh, others. And then you can tell your own idea how it has evolved over the time. Same for corporate governance. Same for any other concepts that you are going to be using in your study. That's the first part. The second part is, right, also you have to say, what does the variable do for the organizations? Right? And likewise, you have to explain those things as well. But I think now high time to get a small break, right? Now it's almost 8.5. Shall we meet at 8.20? A 15 minutes break. Is it okay? Yes, yes sir. Okay, sir. Okay, so we'll take a small break and then we'll continue the discussion how to write a proper literature review. So please follow this protocol for your assignment that which you are going to discuss. Right, but we'll come to that a little bit later about your assignment. But first of all, Let's try to understand how to write a proper literature review on a selected area, right, for your research. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll meet after 15 minutes, 8.20 p.m., not a.m., right?
Okay, students, welcome back. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, can you hear? Okay, good. Thank you very much. So let's Naranjana. So thank you very much. So let's now continue our discussion on the defining of the concepts in your literature review. I told you that it's the first section of your literature review. Let's move forward. What does the variable do for organization? Why is it important for this organization or any organization? For instance, this is how you can write about the importance of the variable. The quality of internal service is closely related to a company's overall performance. According to service profit chain perspective, the achievement of internal customer or employee satisfaction is the basis for achieving excellent and external ex excellent external customer satisfaction. This is why starting internal customer is important. So this is how you write about why studying a particular concept is important. This now is another. You can see what what he told us, Dr. Fault told us. First, explain, right? Define the variable. Let's say it's corporate governance, CSR, or any other area that you have chosen. First, define that, take in two or three, or actually at least four definitions, let's say. And then what you need to do is you have to explain why this concept is important. Again, you cannot just say it's important because I think it's important. You have to give what? You have to give references. You have to give references. Right, you have to give references and you have to explain that properly. Okay, let's move forward. Example, the slides uh, obviously will be shared through a link so you can look into these slides later. So again, why studying in a particular area of study? So if you are studying a, a variable and you want to emphasize on its study or its on or the need to study this particular variable in a particular field, this is how you write it. The literature suggests that higher education began its most recent focus on quality improvement efforts during the 1990s, owing to the increased competition for students and operational funds. For example, Evil 1900 and, uh, 1993 suggested that the rise in QPM efforts in the 1990s was driven by the difficult financial situation in higher education. So why TQM is important in higher education? So this is how you write about importance of a particular concept that you are studying in a particular field. Now status of your literature or status of the literature in your field of study. While Six Sigma methodology has been broad, has seen broad acceptance in the study, limited or little has been published about its use in higher education. Now this further emphasizes the need to study a particular concept in a particular area. Obviously, when you are going through the literature, you will find these statements in existing literature. You will find that people have talked about a particular variable that it's limited. Or while studying those papers, you will get to an idea that yes, there has been a limited research on this particular area. Now, what you do is you write about this in your literature. Again, another example. Now, how will assessment, measurement, investigation of the variable help in the field of study? In order for something to be quantitatively, quantifiably improved, it must be able, it must be able to be measured. Higher education, like many service industry, has struggled to measure service quality. Now, again, why measuring service quality in higher education is important? So you need to emphasize if you are conducting a research on a concept. Why studying this concept is important? Again, another example. So common measurement or what common dimensions have been used. So for this, you can look into this paper. Download this paper and have a look. Now, you have to be very cautious. Your literature review should not look like annotated bibliography, but rather a story where ideas and concepts are linked. You cannot just write, OK, A said this, B said this, C this, said this, and that's it. This, this will not get you published. It should be a story where ideas are linked with each other, where concepts may contradict or complement each other. Try to use latest references wherever possible. Now, this is very important, Buddha. 
Now, when I ask some students to know, which I'll also ask you to do, right? To bring five or six articles in that relates to a particular area. Now, what some students they do is they bring about articles that are 20 years old, 30 years old, right? So you have to bring, you have to consult literature that are recent. During last five years, whatever has been published. So that you have to keep in mind last five years or let's say last 10 years. So because why? Because literature as anything gets outdated. Right now, if you think, if you take concepts like, uh, you know, some concepts. Right, even. You know, we did not even have this concept. Like concept like chat GPT. Tools like chat GPT. About five years ago, it was not there. So if you are going to refer literature on artificial intelligence about five years back or even 10 years back, it will be nonsense. But on the other hand, there are certain literature that are key literature. Right? Some golden nuggets are there, some old studies are there that are really important. Now say for an example, I'm telling, okay, look at the literature that's five years or 10 years, right? at least 10 years ago, right? But now if I'm going to refer to a religion, let's say I'm going to do, you don't need to do a religious study and it's uh, not counted for this because this accounting and finance uh, degree program. But on the other hand, if I'm going to look at uh, uh, religion, then the religious texts that were there for 2,500 years or 3,000 years or whatever the years, it's important. So those are some key literature like the Tripitaka, the Bible, the Quran, the Vedas, or any other uh, religious texts that had been there for 100,000 years or even more, right? It's going to be important. Therefore, in the literature, there might be some key literature that are old, but right could be considered as gold. Old is gold sometimes, isn't it? So, but however, when you take about empirical studies, the studies that have been done in different countries, right? Try to take that within last five years, last ten years at least. So, I'll be giving you a small assignment, maybe this week or next week, where you are asked to bring. Right, present five or yeah, we start with five articles that are related to a particular area. Then, right, so then you can start the review process and you can expand it to more. So that's going to be important because if not, what will happen is you won't be able to do a proper literature review. So I'm going to help you to select better research articles, good research articles. Right for your area of study. Okay. Right. Let's go ahead. And whenever possible, in particular, highlight the importance of the concepts, highlights its value, highlight their benefits. Having done this, the individual discussion of variable, the next step is you write on developing the framework to establish the relationship. Now, there are a few things that one should consider when developing or writing about those relationships. Has the previous studies linked the two concepts? Yes. If yes, what were their findings? You might conduct a study where there is no research or previously available research on the concept. Obviously, then you can't write about it. Then there is a, this, this important question. How do I write about something that has not been established before? Well, this is a very serious question that needs to be answered. This is this is the question we normally come across in our classes when we discuss uh, thesis or research projects with our students. So we'll be discussing this in, in uh, little de uh, detail, uh, but slightly later. Are the variables in any way linked with each other? If yes, how they are linked? Were the findings of the previous studies unanimous? On the other hand, if they were contrary, contradictory, you should mention it. For example, there has been research that assesses the, the positive impact of CSR on organizational performance, while there is also research that has found a negative impact of CSR on, on organizational performance. And there has also been research, been, uh, research that, ha that found no significant impact of CSR on organizational performance. So 
this is not unanimous. Obviously, this gives rise to the need to further research in this particular area. Why studying the linkage between variables is important? Why studying the linkage between these variables is significant in your field of study? How the independent variable affect influences or affects the dependent variable? Obviously, this is uh, more or less related to the previous points. Do the dimensions or traits of individual variable link with the dependent variable? Well, this is particularly important. And this, go, this may take us back to the first point. What if there is no existing research on the concept? So the first step that you should take is to look into the dimension of a particular concept and see if, this, if the dimensions are related to the other concept or not. For example, I'm not finding anything in, in relation to how knowledge leadership is, is related to project success. Okay, very good. There is no research on it. This is the very latest concept, the knowledge leadership one. So the first thing that I should do is look into what knowledge leadership is. What are the key traits of knowledge leadership? So a knowledge leadership is one where leader facilitates knowledge intensive activities. So I can look into literature and find that a leader who facilitates knowledge intensive leadership does this that particular leader finds more success in his organization or her organization. So this is how you develop a map of relationship. You might not find direct relationship established in existing research, but obviously you might find something that is uh, related to the traits or dimensions of a particular concept that may be related to the other variable. Use theory to develop linkages. This is particularly important as mentioned earlier. Your research might get rejected because you did not use any particular theory to develop linkages or identify any particular theory. Now, yeah, this is very important. Now, you can establish the relationship between independent and dependent. What here it says is simply, Dr. Faust says that first you have to you have to define the variable, right? You have to define your variables, the concepts, by taking at least four or three or four definitions and then telling the imports of that. Then what he says is that you have to uh, you have to tell the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So for that, you can use the studies that have been done already. Right now, say for an example, corporate governance and performance. Maybe there's a study done in America, Australia, then in Sri Lanka, in India, in Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, likewise in different other countries, maybe in China as well. So you can explain them. And also, you have to tell the theoretical linkage. How can you link corporate governance and corporate performance? Right, theoretical linkage. You have to explain that also. The theoretical linkage for your information, if you are not familiar, is called the agency theory. In agency theory, it explains how corporate governance could be linked with the corporate performance. So here, there is where you will go, try to explain the linkage. The linkage between the independent and dependent variables. Some students, what they do is they don't give a proper theory. Why these concepts? Why do the independent and dependent variables are linked? They don't tell them. So that's why Dr. Faust says some papers are rejected. Some literature reviews are rejected because of this. You need to tell. So how can you know what theory is applicable in the literature itself? They will tell. If you read good papers, they will say what kind of theory could be used to link the independent and dependent variables. Okay. We are going to look into example for each one of them. The first thing, has the previous studies linked the two concepts? If yes, what were their findings? Now, this is an example. Now, now look at very carefully how two variables are linked and how you are going to write that link. Now, here he is giving a nice example. Look at this. In this study, their study which involved a review of 52 earlier surveys about the correlation between CSR and company performance showed that more socially responsible companies had stronger economic results. So ah, the better the CSR, better the performance. So then he has given two studies, right? Orki study as well as Garinga study and Meal study. And then he says that yes, 
there are 52 surveys performed that establishes the correlation between better CSR lead to better performance. See how it's being pitched. Now they are talking here about what? The relationship between the relationship between the variables. Existing research does tell us that CSR needs to improve the organizational performance. Another example in a read up at all 2019. Connection between CSR operations and company performance. The outcome indicated that CSR has a positive association with all three determinants of co company performance. Now, are the variables in any way linked with each other? Were the findings of the previous study unanimous? On the other hand, contradictory. Now, this is how you write about these. Studies on the relationship between market orientation and innovativeness have produced contradictory results. And this is how you explain the contradictory results that 23 of them found positive correlation while others found a weak or non-significant correlation. So obviously there is a need to further research on market innovation, sorry, market orientation and innovativeness. Why studying this linkage is important in general. So by addressing these important questions, internal suppliers can understand why service areas that they should con concentrate on to effectively improve their internal service quality and internal customer satisfaction. By avoiding the investment of such of much money and other resources in providing service quality dimensions that may not pay off. So you why, why studying these relationship is important in general. Now, this is another example. This is another example. Obviously, I'll share the slides and provide the link in the uh, description section. Now, why studying in this particular relationship is important in your area or field of study? Another example, quality assurance is one of the core elements of Blockna process. So the quality of service concept is particularly important in higher education. So why studying quality assurance is important in higher education? This is why it's important because university education in general and the quality of it in particular are linked in order to respond to education demands of quality and social responsibility that the current situation demands. Another example. Now, this is obviously something that is repetitive. So these are the example how variables are interlinked with each other. Now, if there are, is a link between the dimensions of the concepts, for example, the dimensions of CSR linked with organizational performance. Now, a particular dimension may be more contributing to the improvement of organizational performance or maybe servant leadership. A particular dimension of servant leadership may strongly influence the outcome of a particular variable. So you need to write about these as well. And finally, and most importantly, you need the theory to develop the linkage. For example, you might be studying a variable that or a relationship that that has not been studied previously. Now, this particular example is, is a clear cut example of a relationship that was not studied before this particular study. This is one of uh, my studies where we studied the relationship between servant leadership and career satisfaction. And this was the first study to study this relationship. Now, what we did was we used LMX theory to develop the relationship. Now, how did we do this? So the theoretical link between these two constructs can be described in light of LMX theory. Now, what is LMX theory? LMX theory has shown to be one of the most compelling theories often for understanding the impact of leadership on organizational behavior. The main premise of this theory is that leadership behaviors contribute to the development and maintenance of strong interpersonal relationship between the leaders and followers and are instrumental in helping employers reach their fullest potential. Obviously, when one reaches their fullest potential, they are more or less going to go up the ladder in their career. And then obviously they will be satisfied with their career. So now this LMX theory has helped us improve the identification of how servant leadership helps enhance career satisfaction. Another example, again from one of our, one of our papers, according to KBV knowledge based view, knowledge is created, stored and utilized by individuals and not by organizations as a whole. Coordinating and integrating the knowledge held by individual is a difficult task. Now who coordinates, who integrates? Obviously it's the job of the leader. This can be made possible when an organization has knowledge experts in managerial position who are competent and know how to acquire, store and transfer knowledge. What we are doing here is that we were trying to establish the relationship between knowledge leadership and knowledge management process. But there is no previous research on 
knowledge leadership and knowledge management processes. So we used KBV to establish this relationship. And this is how we did it. And the paper got published. So you can use your theory to establish the relationship between variables. And this is how you do it. Obviously, in the description, I'll mention some of the references as well that you can use to, um, to understand how theory is being used to develop relationship between variables. Now, looking at some of these papers, if we go into, uh, this is obviously this paper has been discussed. This is another paper where the relationship between servant leadership and career satisfaction was established using a theory, that is the LMX theory. And then the hypothesis was proposed. Another paper, this is how the conceptualization Okay, now what, what, what was done in this paper is that this paper actually looked into this framework, impact of corporate social responsibility on organizational performance with mediating role of team outcomes. Now, if you look into this paper, only corporate social responsibility is defined or explained individually. Now, followed by this, the relationships are explained. OP is not defined individually. OP may be defined in here in the text. Similarly, Team outcomes, each of the team outcome is first defined and then based on the theory, how these team outcomes are related with different concepts in the study. This is done or how CSR influences maybe team identification using social identity theory. So each of the paragraph actually focuses on how the variables are related. So in a paper, obviously you have limited space, so you do not need to define each and every variable individually. What you can do is while developing your relationship you can first define the variables and then how they are interlinked with each other this is can be done in the literature i hope the video would have helped you understand how to write your literature thank you very much okay students i think he dr Fowl explained it very well how to write a literature review right so again to summarize right you had first introduce the concepts define the concepts of your study at least take four or five definitions and compare and contrast, right? Then what you have to do is you have to then establish the relationship between, right, the independent and dependent variables. For that, you can discuss other studies that have considered this relationship and found a positive, negative or no relationships, as well as you can use a certain kind of theory or theories to establish the relationship between two variables. So that's how you are going to write your literature review. And under this subject, yes, you will require to do a literature review. Right. Now I would like to ask any questions, whether you have any questions. Questions, concerns? Right. OK. So as we understood. Searching literature should answer these questions. What kind of questions by looking at what others have done will answer is this. What is already known about the area? What concepts and theories are relevant? Is it? What research methods and strategies have been used? Are there any controversies? Are there inconsistent findings? Are there unanswered questions? By doing a literature review, you will be able to answer these questions to a certain extent. Right? So to see what has been done and what has not been done, you can you can do it. You can you can get these answers. You can see these things by performing a proper literature review. Right. So why you should do a literature review? The answer is ob obvious, isn't it? You can learn what has been done already and what has not been done already. And you can see what kind of theoretical frameworks that are applied. You can see what kind of analytical techniques that are required. And of course, it is a required exercise in your proposal as well as in your thesis. So you cannot avoid a literature review. It's a must.
So yes, I told you. Now let me come to how to ensure the quality of a research article. Now there are different ways that you can ensure the. Now first, I could just go and download things from the internet. Right, I could let's say I went to an internet web, you know, to a website, and I could just start downloading. But not all are of good quality. Keep that in mind. Very well, keep that in mind. Not all are of good quality. The next question comes: Then how can we ensure the quality? Now, for an example, I told you earlier. I downloaded an article, but I told it's not good quality because it was procedure. Procedure means proceedings. That's conference publication, not a journal publication. So my next question is, how can you ensure the quality of a research article that you download? Right? There are different ways you can ensure. First of all, look at whether this journal is listed under these databases. Right? So these databases. Emerald. Whether it's listed in Emerald. If the article is published in an Emerald journal, that might ensure a bit of quality. There's another website called Wiley. Science Direct, but not Procedure. Very clearly it says don't use Procedure. Then there's another website called Springer. There's another website called Jesco. So if your articles are coming from these journals, then or these databases, these websites, right? Then there's no problem. I recommend Emerald. On the other hand, to check whether whether a particular journal, whether a particular journal is of good quality or not, you can see the ABDC ranking. It's not ABCD, ABDC ranking. ABDC stands for Australian Business Dean's Council ranking. Right? Yes. Now, to understand whether something is good quality or not, there are standards, isn't it? Now, even for food, even some other items, there's a standard. So, ABDC, this organization called ABDC, Australian Business Dean's Council organization, gives a ranking for certain journals. For an example, let's say the best, if it is a very good journal, they would give a ranking of A star. If it is not so good, it will rank it as A. Right? Not like A star, but quite very good article, but it's going to be A. Then B and C. C is the lowest ranked journals. And if there's no rank, that's a concern, but it doesn't mean that if something is not ranked, that's a bad article. You have to look who has published it. Are these professors, university academics, are these good researchers? Likewise, you might need to see that. So one thing what you can do is, you can check this ABDC rank. Now let me teach you how to do that. Now suppose, let's go to the internet and download some article, let's say corporate governance. And performance in let's say Sri Lanka, some other article. So you can see that there are different articles here. Springer, no problem, you don't need to check that. But sometimes you might download certain things from Research Gate. Yeah. Now there's a Research Gate article. Right. So these are research kit article. And I, I think you can download this one. And let's see if it's a, right. So you can download it and see what's the journal. Particularly if you are going to get from research gate, which I don't that much recommend, well, some uh, journal articles published in the research gate might not be of good or better quality. 
Perfect. Hmm. There is no gender. So there is a problem. But on the other hand, now we downloaded earlier certain articles. Now we'll go to this Emerald article. Now here it says that this was downloaded earlier. Now the journal you can see here. It gives about two other articles, and you can see corporate governance is the journal article. Can you see? Emerald, it's a published and it's Emerald and the ISSN number is there. Now we can check whether this particular journal, corporate governance, now this download from that particular journal, whether it's of good quality or not. You can check that. How to check that? Now remember, this is the journal. Usually at the bottom it will say, or in the top it will say, this corporate governance. And the ISSA number is also there. Like ISBN numbers for journals, they will give the ISSA number. I think one student's uh, microphone is on. So just check that. And, yeah, okay. Right. Now let's see whether this what's the ranking for this journal how to get that it's very easy you go to the internet and you type abdc abdc ranking so you can see australian business teens council ranking is there so you can go to this list and of course, you can download the Excel file. There's an Excel file. Right. And there's a PDF file as well. So let's download the Excel file. Right. You can download it from here. And yes, the Excel file downloaded itself. I'm often in the Excel file. And now let's see. Okay, say what kind of theme I would like to use. Let's use the dark theme, isn't it? Dark grid. Okay, that's good. Okay, the dark theme I applied. Don't worry about those things. Right? Okay, so then you can see here, yeah, you can see. Different journals they are given the ranking. Now, for an example, the journal Abacus has got a ranking of A, and there are some journals A star. Now, let's see corporate governance. What kind of so you can use the find function? Let's say corporate governance. You can see there are different journals. Find next ah, here. There's this general corporate dons. And you can see the ISSN number is also the same. Can you remember the ISSN number? 1472 0701. So make sure that it's there also. And you can see it's a C rated journal. Hmm. Not the best part Excuse is. Me, sir. Right? Yes, brother. Yeah. So what do you mean by ISSN? ISSN number Buddha is the international number given for a journal. Now, I think you are aware of ISBN. Yes. Right. This is an international number given for a journal like ISBN. Uh, okay. 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 Buddha, then a number. That's a number mm. given by that institution. For each book and for each journal, you can get this number. That's ISSA. Oh. It's a serial number given for that particular institution which is involved in. So which is a unique question. Yeah, which is unique, a unique, unique to that uh, unique number. It's a unique number. Uh, it's a unique uh, number. 
Now for this journal, what's the number given? ISSN number. What about the ISSN number? Uh, uh -huh. 2519. Uh, so basically, that's the number given. That's 1472-0701. Now this is for the online publication. For the online publication, they give one number, ISSN number, and sometimes for books, they give the ISBN number. Okay, sir. Got it, sir. Thank you. Very good question, Pita. Excellent question. So, because these, right, because these are for identification to see quality. So, these are serial numbers. So, ISSN stands for the International Standard Serial Number. It's an eight digit serial number used to uniquely identify a publication as a magazine or journal. For book puta, we use ISBN. ISBN. Good question. But you can see it's C rated, isn't it? Not bad, but at least it has rate. Okay. So likewise, you can go and check. You can download this Excel file. So in fact, I will give this Excel file to you. I'll put this into this uh, poll, right, to the chat. So you can refer this particular file. Ah, uh, Right. So some reason it doesn't give, uh, you know, to upload files, it doesn't tell up. I think your administrator has disabled that, uh, you know, to upload any, that mantra. Ah, yes, no, it's there, it's there. Sorry. Your administrator has not done that. Yeah, it didn't. Attach a file. Say, hey, let me see the other thing. How about that? Let me see the upload curl of the other one. Ah, here. Ega would have a tick up parano version. Ega make a loop version. Ega theorem. Very good. Mudita ega miocalatino part of the tick up parano version. Ega put up on the other thing. Let me see. My value. You can download. Oh, yeah, I'll give the link so you can download it by yourself. I'll put the link Puta. So you can download it from here. So go to this website and you can download right this one. Right. So that's how you can ensure the quality. Not all are of good quality, not, not people are the same. Likewise, not all journals are the same. But that doesn't mean that if some journal is not there in that particular ABDC list, it's not good quality. Not all journals are included in ABDC. So what you need to do is you look at who are the, pub, the people who are published. If it is published by uh, recognized uh, recognized academics like professors, doctors of recognized universities, then you might be able to rely on them. Now, for an example, CA Journal of Applied Research is not yet, uh, not yet listed in ABDC Journal Quality List, but it's the CA Sri Lanka's, right? The National Premier Accounting Bodies Journal. So you can trust it. You can follow it. Okay, right. So that's about the ABDC, Australian Business Dean's Council rank, right? Okay, the dark theme seems nice, no? Okay, yes. Right. Now there's an exercise that you have to do, right? The exercise is this. I'm going to give you one week, don't worry, not by tomorrow, <laughs> right? You have to select a particular topic an area, right? Right, that's what you have to do. Maybe it's any area that of your preference. 
maybe it's uh, corporate governance, maybe it's microfinance, maybe it's anything, financial literacy, education, financial education, anything. Select a topic and then use the Microsoft Excel file, right, template that I have given, right, and then indicate this information. The number, one, two, three, four, five, I'll, I'll show you that. The name of the journal, title of the article, ABDC rank publisher. If there's no one, no worries. And let's see the template. So that's the exercise then for this week. And I'm going to give you a whole one week for that. So let's go to the LMS. If you go here, log into the elements. Yeah, let's put this into a bookmark bar. What's this? See, Sri Lanka, I say B. Now this is 2024. It's creating a folder 2024. And let's put that link out here. Great. So next time it's easy to locate this one. And here you can see template. Example for literature. ABDC ranking, this is a little bit older, and I shared the new link. So here now download this Excel file. And here. Now this is what you have to fit. So at least bring five articles on a particular. Now, first of all, give the topic that you have chosen. Any topic that, but it has to be related to accounting or and finance. Don't bring topics of HR or marketing. Now, don't bring topics of, uh, right? Some students bring topics like employee satisfaction. No, that's not accepted because this is an accounting finance degree. So the theme put that's related to accounting, finance, auditing, taxation. Then I have given an example, right? This is the number one, two, three. Likewise, bring at least. Try to ping five articles. This will be your, this is your initial thing. Tell the journal name, then the title of the article, and whether the ABDC rank is there, or whether it's coming from Emerald Wiley Science Direct, but not Procedure, Springer or just tell whether it's there. And then uh, say, try to bring publications after 2012. That means about 10 years, 11 years ago. Right, don't take articles that are be, that are very, very old before 2012. So try to get articles, but if you are really unable to find articles on that topic, maybe you can go to even 2010. Right, 2010, let's say 2010. And what you need to do is you need to submit this into the elements. So upload that. I'll now put that particular link so you can. You can upload it. Right. So I'm going to put it over here. So let me take this one. And I'm going to set the assignment 2020. It's 2024, in fact. Let's say research article published. Upload the MS Excel file. Right. So 
see when I can uh, additional files. So I will put that file as well. So use this particular template for that purpose. And let's go to download. So I put it down. You can you can download it from that area, right? This one. It doesn't allow to put that. But never mind. So you can download that template I showed you. It's already there in the elements. And let's set a deadline. Today is 23rd, and next week will be 30th, isn't it? So let's set it by 29th, due date 29th. 29th, let's make it midnight. And before that, please submit that. This particular template, only that. So you have to submit that Excel file. So let's also that I have the submit currently on this. We'll say document spreadsheet files. Let's accept on the spreadsheet file. So please do submit an spreadsheet file. Yeah, why not this thing? Okay. Right. So at least bring five files. I'll do that as well. Upload the index Excel file. The details at least file to search articles. At least. at least, right? So if you want, you can have that. Okay, I can also put that file. Right, I'll show this template there. Then it is again. Okay, the template is there. Right. Please use the MS Excel template. So it's there. Right, and this is going to be on the 29th. In fact, on the 30th. Right. Okay. So this that that's it. Okay, so please submit it over here uh, under assessments. So you have one whole week, and let me now show the thing. It's still hidden. Now it's, you should be able to see them. Right. So then you can start because now there's an assignment that's given to you where you have to, you have to do a literature review. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to start it now itself and guide you how to do that. Right. Okay. Let's go back. Dark thing is good, no? Excuse me, sir. Yes, of course, Buddha. Uh, sir, uh, can you show the Excel that you shared? For a, for a small question. Yeah, of course. 
this is the excel file okay. right uh, so, uh, so in the d column e column yes so if it's yeah if it's uh, if it's from the springer website it can also have an abdc ranking is it for an it could have or not have. Not have. Now, say, Puta, if there's a ABDC ranking, you put that. First thing is ABDC. But sometimes oh, okay. it might be coming from Springer website. Right? Okay. But maybe sometimes ABDC ranking is not there. Then you can tell okay. it's coming from ABDC. All right. So, first thing you have to consider is the ranking. ranking. Yes, ABDC rank, oh. give the priority to the ABDC rank. But not all journals are included in the, in the ABDC rank. So you could select, uh, uh, if it is not there, then you can tell whether it, it comes from Emerald, Wiley, uh, Science Direct, but not Procedure, right? Spring or yes. If there's ABDC rank, then you mention that. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Very good question. Excuse me, right. sir. Yes. Sir, that uh, yes, Google Google Scholar site also same as that Emerald site. No, no. Google no. Scholar. Google Scholar. <laughs> uh, my recommendation is, yeah, there might be some good articles in Google Scholar, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of things are not. Quality Buddha, Buddha, uh, in Google Scholar, Buddha, you have different kinds of articles. Now, say for an example, Buddha, in, uh, now in the society, we have different kinds of people. Now, not in Sri Lanka. Now, for an example, in, in a different country, there's a parliament. Right? Now, in this parliament, Buddha, there are also, we have people in that country. But what can you say? Are those people of good quality? In certain countries, we have donkeys, isn't it? We have donkeys uh, in the parliament. So likewise, when it comes to articles also, same thing. There are certain articles of very good quality. Same like people. Then there are certain articles that are of not good quality. Right? So we need to always put a select good quality articles why then only we'll be able to do the to see what good research is if not if you see poor quality research right then you will think that this is research and you will depend on them which might give you completely wrong research results of due to poor quality so that's why always select good research articles good quality research articles so i told to certain ways to decide that of course number one you can see the abdc ranking of that particular right i recommend having at least b even don't go for c a b right not c right you can go to a b a star a b c ones might not be of good quality Oh, if there is no ranking, it doesn't mean that those are not of good quality. See whether they are coming from these sources, from these websites. Emerald website, Wiley, Science Direct, but in Science Direct, there's this procedure, don't take it. And Springer, or oh, see whether it's coming from just. But other than Google Scholar, ResearchGate, hmm, be very careful. Good question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Buddha. Thank you very much. I got some very nice questions. Thank you. How about others? Mm -hmm. Then I will teach about plagiarism and uh, those kind of things. And now we have chat GPT as well. So don't choose them, it could be detected. And in that case, you might lose all marks, right? 
and reported as well. So therefore, you have to not, you should not use, uh, you don't, you should not use plagiarism as well as certain other AI tools, right? You can get insights, but not use them, right? To forge assignments. Right. So we'll have a discussion next week uh, once you have submitted and I will take one by one and see whether the five research articles are of good quality. And I'll comment on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in fact, that's what I want to discuss with you today. So uh, mm -hmm. we have almost come to the end of the lecture. Thank you very much. And we shall meet next week. Okay. If you have any questions, you can ask me now. Is it clear with today's uh, discussion and what you need to do? Okay. Since there's no questions, so I think enough for today. Appreciate it for your effort, for being here as well as for your efforts. And we'll meet next week with that. Thank you very much and good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Please take care. Okay. Good night. Good night.